Here are the top stories for today, November 20, 2019. President Duterte orders a total ban on the use and importation of e-cigarettes. The president says he sees nothing extravagant in the construction of the 50 million peso cauldron for the 30th Southeast Asian Games. An anti-communist group hits the Dutch embassy silence on its protest calling to bring home CPP founder Jose Maria Sison. And South Korean ambassador Han Dong-man proposes the opening of a Korean town as he vows to bring in more tourists to the Philippines. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte on Tuesday ordered the total ban on the use and importation of vaping devices or e-cigarettes in the country. Duterte made the decision as he acknowledged that the vapes are not good for humans. Duterte issued the directive following the first reported case of an illness related to vaping in the country. Ang cigarette, the confirmed chemical there that's uh, not good for humans, deadly, it's nicotine. It's, uh, it, it uses a habit, habit forming, and it is toxic, and it kills people. And there, even the Surgeon General of uh, the United States said that it will cause cancer. That's why it is there on the side of the market, it, it will cause cancer. Now, it don't vaping, Sabinella is electronic. Don't give me that I will ban it. I will ban it. The use and the importation. Uh, I hope everybody is listening. You know why? Because it is toxic. And uh, the government has the power to issue measures to protect public health and public interest. Meanwhile, President Duterte also ordered the Department of Agriculture to suspend rice importation, saying that it is currently harvest season for local rice. Duterte said he decided to suspend rice imports because there was no other remedy to ease the effects of the rice terrification law, which led to lower farm gate prices of palay. Mr. President, sir, point of clarification, are you officially ordering Secretary Dar to suspend rice importation? Yes, because it is harvest time. Mm -hmm. Itong situation, devil and the deep blue sea, kung walang pagkain, halos kabahan ang mga tao. nag na. Tapos sige na, magugutom ng mga tao, wala nang bigas, next month, wala nang kainin, mahal na. Ito namang mga ano, uh, producer, sige sila tanim, tapos pag harvest time, nagkukumpit, wala nang bumibili sa kanilang pudus. It is really between, I will simplify it with you. Itong problema natin sa bigas, ganito yan. Ang elements dyan is, producer, ang mga farmers, ang nagtatanim, ang consumers, tayo. Tayo lang ang naglalaro niyan. Wala nang iba. Ang producer ang nagtanim at yung kumakain. Ang problema itong kumakain, marami masyado na itong si producer ang tanim niya kulang after harvest time. Magkulag talaga ang supply. So, panahon kong wala na, kung hindi ako mag-import, kagaya nung nangyari, wala na. Sigurado, gutom ang abutin. Magrarayot yung tao. So, mamili ka kung ikaw na sa pwesto ko. Magutom yung tao o galit yung mga farmers. On the same press conference with palace reporters at Malacanian Palace, President Duterte admitted that he cannot fully trust Vice President Lenny Robredo because he does not know her well enough. The president made the statement as he justified his decision to drop his initial plan 
to appoint Robredo as a cabinet member, serving as co-chairperson of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Drugs. The problem with Robredo is this. Right after she was uh, appointed, she began talking publicly about inviting the Human Rights Commission. She was talking to the United Nations. She would want to talk to the European. At marami na siyang sinapinagsasabi. Kung ganon, sabi ko, I cannot appoint her as a cabinet member. If that is the way her mouth behaves, there can never be a position for her. Kasi kung cabinet member sana siya, uh, you know, for the authority because he's, he would be an alter ego of me. Ang problema kasi dito nito, I cannot trust her. Not, because, because, not, not only because, not only, ha, so pagdag, not only because she is with the opposition. I do not trust her because I do not know her. Hindi ko alam ko sino ang kausap niya noon, kung sino mga politiko, kung sino mga tao, Probably, you know, one of the biggest, uh, one the biggest actually of uh, a drug manufacturing apparatus was in Bicol, in Naga. But not, 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 I'm sure, but in Bicol. So, hindi ko alam politiko siya, hindi ko alam kung sino kausap niya. President Duterte has emphasized the need for the government to focus on conflict-prone communities in an effort to stop the decades-old communist insurgency in the country. Duterte made the call during a joint command conference with the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict, the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police held at Malacanian Palace on Monday. According to National Security Advisor Hermogenes Esperon Jr., the President wants to end insurgency in the country to spare Filipino children of this problem. To achieve the President's goal of ending local communist armed conflict, Esperon said the retooled community support program is now being implemented in areas with vulnerable populations to ensure the improved delivery of basic services. He said the government's milestone programs such as free tertiary education, free irrigation, Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino program, universal health care program, ease of doing business, Build, build, build infrastructure program and intensified implementation of land reform have enhanced the living conditions of the Filipino people. And in other news, the Department of Transportation on Tuesday announced the completion and pending turnover of 22 port projects so far in 2019. According to DOTR, the completed projects in the Calabarzon region include Dinahican Port, Lagimano Port and Pitogo Port under the Quezon Port Cluster, Balayan Port, Talisay Port, Barangay Daikitin Wharf Development, and Barangay Marlanga Port. From Bicol Region, the completed ports are the Prieto Diaz Port, Castilla Port, Paracle Port, Masbate Roro Ports, and Salvacion Port. And in Eastern Visayas, the completed projects are Balangkayan Port, Maydolong Port, Kinapondan Port, Pinabakda Port, Kawayan Seaport, Villaba Municipal Port, Limasawa Port, Hindang Port, Carigara Port, and ports in Albuera Leyte. In the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao, the Polok Port project is also completed. The DOTR said the 22 completed ports are in addition to the 173 commercial port projects completed and facilitated by the Philippine Ports Authority in the last three years. Still to come, President Duterte says he sees nothing extravagant in the construction of the 50 million peso cauldron for the 30th Southeast Asian Games. An anti-communist group hits the Dutch embassy silence on its protest calling to bring home CPP founder Jose Maria Cizon. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues.
leadership is a very important mechanism for the Philippines and the rest of ASEAN to compete in the world economy. is the proposal to remove uh, one big uncertainty, and that is the uncertainty in the South China Sea. And uh, the idea was essentially to push for the completion or the finalization of the Code of Conduct. You are still watching the PNA Newsroom. President Duterte said there was nothing extravagant in the 50 million peso cauldron built for the 30th Southeast Asian Games. The president issued a statement after Senate Minority Leader Franklin Relon questioned the spending of over 50 million pesos for the design and construction of the stadium cauldron. Duterte said the amount was justified in a bid to meet the product of the mind of the creator. He also believed that there was no irregularity in the purchase of the cauldron. The design of the cauldron, which is 3 meters in diameter, cost 4.48 million pesos, while the 50-meter high foundation amounted to 13.4 million. The total cost of construction was pegged at 32 million. President Duterte said he was taking his time in deciding who would be the next PNP chief because he would be appointing the heads of every department there, especially the comptroller and the finance people. The three police generals on the list of contenders for the next PNP chief are Lieutenant General Camila Cascolan, Major General Guillermo Yazar, and one more whom he did not name. PNP officer in charge, Lieutenant General Archie Francisco Gamboa, was also among the top candidates to replace Oscar Albayalde as PNP chief. The president cited former PNP chief, now Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, as an example of an appointee whose decisions he did not interfere with. They're all good. They're soldiers. They came from the academy. I have no doubt about their uh, integrity, but I'm taking my time appointing one. Sino yung gusto niyang mapunta doon? Sino yung kaibigan niya? An anti-communist group has accused the Embassy of the Netherlands in the Philippines of bias on their call to help bring Communist Party of the Philippines founder Jose Maria Sison back home. The Liga Filipinas Independencia expressed dismay over the move of the Dutch Embassy to ignore their protests. In an email last November 12, the Dutch Embassy said it does not wish to com comment to the press on the series of protests held in front of its office in Makati. Liga spokesperson Nolan Tionko said that given this, their group is more determined to continue with the protest. Parent organizations Hands Off Our Children and League of the Parents of the Philippines also shared the group's demand to bring Sison back to the country so they may get justice. Chonko, meanwhile, said they are sending a letter to a member of the parliament of the Dutch government. The Chief of the Army's 4th Infantry Division has called on remaining female New People's Army members to surrender to avoid becoming sex slaves of the communist rebel movement. Major General Franco Nemesio Gacal issued the call on Monday in line with the 18-day campaign to end violence against women organized by the Philippine Commission on Women. Gacal said that for 50 years, NPA commanders have been violating their female combatants. He said 4ID has recorded cases of sexual exploitations against female MPA members perpetrated by their senior male cadres. Gakal urged female NPA combatants to surrender in order to be saved from sexual abuses. He said they will ensure that the female former rebels undergo the healing and reconciliation process through the help of the government so they recover emotionally and psychologically and prepare them to return to mainstream society. 
The provincial government of Ilocos Norte is increasing its rice stocks in case of emergency. This even as authorities and rice millers assure consumers there is enough supply in the province. More on this and other news from the provinces from Janice Cabe. The Ilocos Norte government is beefing up its rice stocks to ensure steady supply in the province even in extreme emergency situations or during strong typhoons. On Monday, the Sangguniang Panlalawigan approved a resolution authorizing Governor Matthew Joseph Manotok to make a deal with the National Food Authority for the rice sales. Last year, the board allocated around 35 million pesos for the purchase of palay and rice in the province from qualified rice traders and farmers. The Ilocos Norte government is assured of having sufficient rice supply until the next harvest season. Meanwhile, the target to complete the housing projects along the Yolanda Corridor by 2020 is seen to be on track. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograres, chairperson of the Interagency Task Force Yolanda, turned over eight project sites in Aklan, Antique, Capiz, and in Iloilo. The eight project sites have over 5,400 units, with majority already occupied. In Panay Island, the target housing units are over 90,000, with the completed units at 63% as of September 30, 2019. In other news, quarantine inspectors of the Bureau of Animal Industry in Negros Oriental seized raw meat and some byproducts from a fast craft that arrived at Dumaguete from Bohol. The items did not have the pertinent documents from the port of origin. The BAI said that amid the ASF scare in Luzon, the province is still allowing the entry of these items from other places, provided that the necessary documents are presented to authorities. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come, South Korean Ambassador Han Dongman proposes the opening of a Korean town as he vows to bring in more tourists to the Philippines. And Caraga Region joins the celebration of International Men's Day. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Every country must be rules-based, meaning we will have to respect international law. We will have to respect the uncles. In other words, we, we should be treating each other equally and fairly. We, the Philippines, maintain uh, a healthy and uh, good relationship with all countries. Uh, we, we are a developing country. We have to be a friend. All the countries. South Korean ambassador to the Philippines Han Dongman has promised President Rodrigo Duterte to bring in more South Korean tourists to the Philippines. The envoy made the promise during a courtesy call on the president at the Malacanang Palace on Monday. Han estimated that more than 500,000 Filipinos will be visiting Korea this year compared to last year's 450,000 visitors. 
Han emphasized he was very happy to witness the dropping crime rate under Duterte's strong leadership. He also said the growing popularity of Korean pop, drama, food and other products in the Philippines may soon give rise to a Korea town in Malate, Manila. In turn, Han asked the president to ensure that South Korean tourists remain safe while traveling around the country. Han, meanwhile, hailed his relationship with Philippine universities, which provide Korea language programs to help improve Philippine-Korea ties. In continued efforts to rehabilitate Marawi City, the government distributed cash aid, this time to residents less affected by the siege. More on this from Christine Lin Viajante. The Department of Social Welfare and Development kicked off the distribution of financial assistance amounting to 10,000 pesos to the residents of less affected area in Marawi City. Residents are profiled through Katanor, a profiling spearheaded by Task Force Bangon Marawi. Being a member agency of TFBM Subcommittee on Health and Social Welfare, DSWD is committed in providing support for the Marawi recovery and rehabilitation. As Nawi Lala of Boto Ambolong thanked DSWD and TFBM for the assistance they had received. Sa DSWD, maraming salamat din kasi uh, ginagampanan nila yung trabaho nila. Sa mga kapwa ko pong mga taga Marawi, tiis-tiis lang, kabangon din tayo. At saka ang gobyerno, naghanap sila ng paraan para mapalago at saka maibangon tayo. Meanwhile, Noroline Adiong of Boto Ambolong shared that she and her mother plans to put up a sari-sari store with the financial assistance given to them. Nagpapasalamat kasi na malaking tulong sa amin yung 10,000 para sa bagong bagong um, kumbanga ng mga tindahan. Makabukas kami ng tindahan na maliit. DSWD will continue to distribute financial assistance to the Laa residents. Here is the schedule of the distribution of this week. The residents also received 30 kilos of rice donated by the Taiwan government through the World Vision Philippines. For PNA Newsroom, Christine Lin Viajante from the Philippine Information Agency. In our four news, the European Union on Monday called on all sides in Hong Kong to exercise restraint and said that any violence is unacceptable. The EU Commission said in a news briefing in Brussels that the bloc continues to monitor the situation in Hong Kong. It called on all involved parties to engage constructively in efforts to de-escalate the situation. The EU said actions by the law enforcement authorities must remain strictly proportionate while upholding fundamental freedoms including the right of peaceful assembly and expression. More than 50 protesters were detained on Monday as Hong Kong police lay siege to the Hong Kong Polytechnic University which was occupied by protesters since last week. Hong Kong is witnessing protests since early June against the Carrie Lam administration's move to legalize extradition to mainland China. Karaga region joins the rest of the world in celebrating International Men's Day on Tuesday. The Commission on Population in Karaga region highlighted a series of activities to recognize the role of men in the population program of the government. In Bayugan City, Agusan del Sur, more than 300 residents from different barangays received modern family planning services such as free bilateral tubal ligation and non-scalpel vasectomy from a caravan. Male participants during the activity in Bayugan City were given separate sessions and discussions under the Katropa Advocacy of Popcorn 13. Another caravan served residents in Patinay, Prosperidad Agusan del Sur. The Katropa session aims to educate men on the provisions of modern family planning by the government. Here now is the latest in our community billboard. Everyone is invited to visit the first ever Christmas village in Santo Tomas, Davao del Norte. The Christmas village is opening in line with this year's Pascong Tomasino Malipayon Ug Malinawon festivities. 18 business establishments participated in this year's Christmas village, which will serve as an added attraction for those looking for new attractions during the Yuletide season. The Disneyland-themed attraction will be open from December 6 to 31st, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m.
Here's another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte orders a total ban on the use and importation of e-cigarettes. The president says he sees nothing extravagant in the construction of the 50 million peso cauldron for the 30th Southeast Asian Games. An anti-communist group hits the Dutch embassy silence on its protest calling to bring home CPP founder Jose Maria Sison. And South Korean ambassador Han Dong-man proposes the opening of a Korean town as he vows to bring in more tourists to the Philippines. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I am William Theo. Good day.